I just want to point out right here, like before we get started, the guests aren't here yet, but let's just zoom in on Dontavious shoes. We, this is what we be doing in the, <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> invited by Joe McGill of the Slave Dwelling Project to participate in a program um, over the weekend at Point of Honor Museum in Lynchburg, Virginia. Joe is one of those people that if he calls, all I ask is where do I need to be and when? Love Joe McGill. One of my closest friends, Dontavius Williams, he's the founder of Chronicles of Adam, was also presenting that weekend. And so we <laughs> decided that we were gonna do a little bit of prep work in the morning together in the kitchen. He's always a good time. Point of Honor was a plantation from the late 18th century to the mid 19th century. We don't know what the day-to-day -day lives of the enslaved persons were like or even have many of their names, but we do have a few pieces. And from that, we can definitely see this property took a lot of work. I'm going to include information about the site down below. Please check them out. I think that they're really making strides to change their interpretation, to really be uh, inclusive, but really tell a well-rounded story. For today's impression, which you all will learn about in just a bit, I decided to go with my usual boots and my sack and petticoat. But first, I need to start with my shift and corset. So the shift I'm wearing today is from Trousseau Victorian and this one really, really works for me. It's very comfortable. Uh, it does what it needs to do and it's just beautifully made. So I'll include the Etsy shop, a link to their Etsy shop down below. Now the corset is from Red Threaded. This will take me a lot longer to put on today just because I'm hearth cooking. Um, any funky things I do with tightening my corset today is not due to the corset and how it was made, but just because I want to make sure that um, I place it correctly on my waist uh, so that I can get the best range of, mo of motion. This corset by Red Threaded is amazing. I've had it for two years. I am a big girl. I am very fleshy. It feels so good um, and it's still, the form still holds uh, years later and I wear my corset regularly, um, possibly um, one to two times a week uh, before the quarantine. So you all definitely know that um, this corset has put up with a lot and it is still kicking. <laughs> so uh, the, this is a beautifully made corset. Uh, thank you, Cynthia, uh, Red, -threaded, uh, Red Threaded Corsets. It's amazing. Uh, so all this to say, um, if I'm doing funky things with this corset, it's because I'm, um, I'm being chainy and <laughs> I want to make sure that it sits properly on my body um, for the day. Usually when tightening my corset, I can actually do it under four minutes now. But you'll notice that I'm moving around a lot, um, just my usual range of motion while I'm hearth cooking. Uh, and I recommend that people do this before tightening your corset. Um, if you're doing anything more than sitting and looking pretty, <laughs> make sure that you move around a bit while you're tightening your corset. Just the FYI. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah.
you guys don't know, um, what I do, actually for a living, is um, uh, it's called the Slave Dwelling Project. I, I find places like this, wherever they exist, in these United States, and I ask the owners if I can spend the night in these spaces. These slave dwellings that don't exist here anymore, that's what I focus on. Because, you know, once upon a time, you know, again, you could come to these houses and, and, and hear only about that beautiful, significant big house. And the story stayed right there. Well, we've taken the story out of the back doors of these nice, beautiful houses into these dwellings where the enslaved people once inhabited. And, and, and we depend on places like the Point of Honor Museum to allow us access. Because if they allow us access, that means that they're at least half the way there, half the halfway there, at least have the desire to want to tell this element of the story. Um, well, no, those places don't ex physically exist here anymore, where, where the field hands would have lived. But we can speculate. Because this was a tobacco farm, that uh, there were enslaved people living in slave dwellings somewhere on the property, field hands living somewhere on the property. They usually used the material that was available to them. If they had to clear this land of rocks, field stone that may have been here to uh, make this place capable of growing rice, chances are they would have used those field stones. Let me, let me get a zoom in on on this, on Don Tavius's shoes right here. They, dirty. <laughs> <laughs> they, they not dirty, they Nikes. <laughs> Look at a mess. If they had them, they worn them. So this is a very special day. I am the first black woman to be cooking in this kitchen since the time of enslavement. So this is very special. I feel very honored to be here. And we're, we're getting started here. Let me keep an eye on my fire because it's still just starting. I decided to interpret an enslaved cook from the 1850s. I also decided to cook two dishes, one for the Payne family, uh, the enslavers, and one for the enslaved population. As a family of means, the Paynes had the option of going on a leisure picnic somewhere on the property, which was an acceptable pastime seen in this mid 19th century painting. I went about making and packing an appropriate basket with chicken pie, cheese, and pickles. See, I give Don Tavia's the hard jobs. <laughs> I get the pretty jobs of just putting food and seasoning uh, in the pot. And he over here scrubbing. <laughs> Look at him. And I'm Sweating like, and it ain't even started yet. <laughs> it's okay. We seasoning Adam for the day. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So when he get out there, he'll real look broke down. <laughs> like, oh, y'all. It's a hard life. It is. <laughs> I derived my chicken pie recipe from instructions in the American Frugal Housewife by Lydia Maria Child. She instructs a nice way of serving up cold chicken or pieces of cold fresh meat is to make them into a meat pie. Lay in your bits of meat or chicken with two or three slices of salt pork. Place a few thin slices of your paste here and there. Drop in an egg if you have plenty. Fill the pan with flour and water seasoned with a little pepper and salt. If the meat be very lean, Put in a piece of butter or such sweet gravies as you may happen to have. Cover the top with crust and put it in the oven or bake kettle to cook 20 minutes or half an hour. Now, this is one of my favorite receipts, but I added a few changes. Instead of putting the flour and water directly in, I decided to make a roux of butter and flour on the side. I didn't brown it too much. Um, I didn't care for color, but I really wanted that kind of that roux taste. Um, so I also added in uh, after the roux was prepared, I then added in some chicken stock um, as well as some rosemary. I thought it gave a really nice flavor. Um, I put onions and carrots with the chicken into the pie. And then I added I sliced up boiled egg over the chicken and vegetable mixture, and then poured um, the 
the gravy over it. It was so good. People said it was really good. And um, a few people who were there are really picky eaters. So it really, <laughs> it really brought, brought joy to me that people enjoyed it. The COVID safety measures were intense. I was not playing games. I got tested before I came and I got a negative result back. Then I wore a face mask and plastic face shield uh, in airplane, uh, airports um, between New York to Virginia. And I was really trying to be proactive. But in addition, I called the site a billion times. I emailed um, with them and they were just so awesome in making us feel safe. Um, they really were wanting to protect us as well as the public. So I just kudos to them. Uh, and they were just so patient with my emails. Uh, so I, I'm just so grateful uh, for the staff there. They were amazing. Um, there were staff members outside the kitchen making sure that there were no more than four guests in the kitchen at any one time. Um, I didn't feel comfortable wearing a face mask while cooking over the fire which was on me because science does say um, you can, you are getting proper airflow with a mask on, um, but it just really made me, it, I, I felt like I was suffocating over the fire. Um, so we came with a policy of um, everyone coming in absolutely had to have a mask on. We opened all the windows and doors and I could tell we were getting a good cross breeze. Um, the only people I um, interacted with um, who came closer than uh, eight feet to me uh, was Dontavious and Kelly, uh, and that was the calculated risk. And when I got home, I quarantined. So six more days to go. Make sure that, that everything that we supposed to get, we get. Well, sometimes the overseer don't do it the way he's supposed to do it. He did it the way he wanted to do it sometimes. And when it comes to them rations, we supposed to get three and a half pounds of salt pork and a peck of cornmeal. Three and a half pounds of salt pork and a peck of cornmeal supposed to last you from Monday to Monday. I'm going to tell you the truth here. A heap of time, we run out of food before we run out of wheat. The, the process of them going from cotton is king to brick making. Brick making came as the winter crop and they would go and get the bank, make a big bankment, a, a big mound, and then let the rain drive out all the impurity and then when they go to when they go to move the bricks, the women and children at 12 years old, that was their task. And then they would line the, the bricks up and make the uh, um and lay the bricks up and then after seven days, then they'll put it make a kiln and the So we have Okay, so we have the turkey necks. Um, I just put the turkey necks in. No boiling in there. I don't know if you can see that. And then we have, I'm going to go ahead and check the um, the pot, the chicken pie in there.
for the enslaved population, I decided to go with an agusi soup. Agusi is a West African melon. The seeds are ground up and used as thickener in soups. Modern Nigerian agusi soup usually has palm oil, fermented locust beans, and crayfish as the most intense uh, flavor profiles. But I chose the more Black American flavor by replacing those with lard. But we use Crisco because there are people who weren't eating, uh, who don't eat pork. And of course, smoked turkey next. You all know those. that is what my favorite flavoring. Uh, the rest of the ingredients I had no problem finding locally. Onions, chicken stock, chicken, uh, green leafy vegetables. I chose collards, hot peppers, and a lot of hot peppers. And of course, pumpkin seeds as a substitute for agusi seeds. Ground nuts and seeds were and still are common in West African foodways. Hence, from the WPA narratives, point to the tradition continuing in the Americas, with peanut soup being the most common. Though I do see mentions of sunflower and pumpkin seeds being incorporated into savory dishes. All this to say, I have no documentation of a goosey soup in early America. But it's hard to believe that Africans would have passed up an opportunity to add more fat and protein to their sparse diet with seeds that they were already familiar with. One pot meals were very common and it was so easy just to ground up a bunch of pumpkin seeds and put them in. So it made sense to me. And uh, just having studied a lot of West African foodways as well as uh, Black American early foodways, it made sense. end of a day I can catch a moment catch my breath and sit and think now I want to give a special thank you to point of honor for making this happen once again thank you to my patreons again for making all of this possible and I'm going to close out with my dinner with Kelly Dietz and Dontavius have a good day everyone <laughs> oh. I can't even deal like this. Real laughter. <laughs> That's real ass laughter. So that we are talking to Nicole. <laughs> look, look. <laughs> I want y'all to go follow this woman right here, Nicole. Okay, I'm gonna go put it Chronicles. right here. We got to do on the on the vlog. She on the vlog. This is what we do. <laughs> it's on. It's look. <laughs> It's all strong. <laughs>